Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're stopping by. So we're going to get in the mud for a little bit. Um, I, I, I said we're going to try to stay away from drama, but there is some things I do want to talk about. Uh, mainly, um, mainly our good old friend Boogie2988. Now let me go ahead and give you some history here. So this might be from another perspective from somebody who's been a long time viewer uh, that enjoyed the content, uh, thought he was a humble person, a nice person, um, and, you know, just basically followed everything he did. Now, there's a lot of people like that, not just me. There's a lot of people that follow blindly, and I was one of them, um, which sucks. It does suck. It sucks to find out that somebody you looked up to or took inspiration from becomes an entirely big, giant piece of shit, and that's the terrible thing about it is because um, I started I started doing YouTube videos uh youtube and twitch i think 2016 maybe might have been earlier than that uh, off and on and my biggest inspiration was boogie 2988 uh i saw it as hey he's a fat guy he's a depressed guy and he's a nerd and he's making it on the internet this is well before he got into millions of subscribers and before his controversies and stuff like that I was one of those guys that just started a channel because I said, wait, if he can do it, then I can do it. And there's a lot of people who did the same thing. Um, and people still do it today. Um, younger people as well. They try to uh, mock their favorite creators. Uh, now it's all fucking garbage. Now it's just harassment and uh, disrespect and stuff like that. But um, Book of Gen 98 was always an interesting case for me. Uh, it was actually kind of uh, sad, to be honest with you, because I was like obsessed with watching his content, and that that does suck. It really does. Um, don't get obsessed with content. Uh, I've reached out to him. I've talked to him a couple times, um, off and on. He's never said anything bad to me, personally. Um, and like I said, I've been watching him for years. I made content about him in the past. Uh, I've tried to do collaborations and usually, um, it ends up, oh yeah, maybe. Okay. And it's just like short with these audience members. When you kind of find out that the people that he actually concentrates on are the ones that bash him or give him a hard time, you really start to realize that he's not in it for, himself or other, helping other people right i'm sorry i'm gonna be stuttering a lot because i stutter um it he's more concentrated on the bad than the good um that's pretty much how the low cow thing is going right now he is a, he is by very definition a low cow and what does that mean basically a low cow is somebody that made it on the internet with some prominence only to come out and find out but they are a waste of uh, human life, basically. Piece of garbage. Garbage people, pretty much. Chris Chan, Cyrax, Boogie2988, Delete Laws, all of them locales. Every single one of them. Um, and Turtle Boy. Locale. All of these. All these people are locales. And they try their best, whatever they can do, to get some type of fame. Uh, no matter what the cost is, could be... Your reputation getting ruined. You go into jail. You've been on a SA offenders list. Cyrax. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Chris Chan. Pretty sure he's on a SA offenders list. Or he got put in prison for something he did that was very not good. Um, these people are pretty gross. And there's a whole lot more out there. Uh, I'm discovering. I I've been looking at the locale stuff for a while. Um, and I've never really commented much on it, but I kind of feel like we need to. Um, you know, I follow Boogie on Twitter, and I watch his rants and his dumb shit he says till this day. Uh, I don't know why. I, I I just tune in every once in a while just to see what's going on. Um, and things keep on coming out about him. Ever since the doc documentary that came out uh, probably a couple months ago, uh, where... Basically, Boogie took his nice guy persona or any reputation that he did have and just flushed it down the fucking drain. Uh, and that's exactly what Boogie's done, especially in the documentary. You actually hop on to comment sections and you can disregard all of his regular hate people, all his trolls and stuff like that. But you'll see you'll see in the comment sections in Twitter, 
uh, YouTube, whatever he's on, uh, people saying, hey, I used to follow you. I used to be a great guy. I, I was inspired by you. Then you shown this documentary and the way you're acting now, uh, I can't believe I, you know, dedicated part of my life following somebody that's a horrible piece of shit. Boogie, I hope that wasn't your plan. I hope that wasn't your plan. I know you say you always play a character. That's not a character. When when the character basically becomes a heaping pile of trash and nobody trusts you, then you're not really doing anything good. Even though you're saying you want to help people, man, I like to help people. But if you go back a couple months ago, maybe a year ago, I was kind of a piece of shit because I was harassing other uh, YouTubers. Well, ones I felt felt deserved it. But I was still getting my hands dirty with the drama stuff. I, I, don't, I really don't want to be a drama channel. I really don't. But sometimes you do have to call out some people that are definitely not genuine. And Boogie, you're not it, man. You are not it. Um, if I had any regrets at all, it would have been inspiring myself with myself to start streaming and YouTube channels and not be inspired by him. Um, and that's a mistake that a lot of us make. Uh, if you take a look at my content, like back in the day, it was very similar to Boogie's. Um, it's usually some kind of uh, nice message or some gaming stuff and all that stuff. And, you know, I've changed my content off and on, off and on, off and on. It's always changed uh, just to try different things. But it does pay me to see my favorite, one of my favorite creators uh, on the platform uh, just fall into this big giant pit. It's like the Sarlacc pit from Star Wars. That's basically what it is. Uh, maybe Boogie's the Sarlacc pit. And I'm not trying to call him fat or anything because look at me. I'm uh, thick. I am thick. I like using this. I, I really do. Whoop, whoop. Oh shit, I, I think I froze it. Never mind. <laughs> it, it, apparently it didn't like that. I froze it. It's like, don't do that again. Uh, stream decks are pretty nice. Just saying. Um, but here's the thing. I, I definitely won't be inspiring myself from Boogie to do content again. If anything, I'm going to do it myself. Uh, and along with people that aren't pieces of shit. Um... And anybody has followed me throughout the years, and I've said good things about him, disregard all that shit. Call me out. Be like, hey, you liked that guy back in the day. Yeah, I did. I did. I don't now. Really don't care about him now. It's a waste of life. And the thing he's doing to that poor girl, man, um, there was a screenshot on Twitter. Uh, Boogie basically said his girlfriend got kidnapped and uh i guess it got immediately taken down and boogie was gaslighting another user saying no what the fuck is this i never said that and somebody went back with the screenshot and shown it um boogie's an impulsive liar really if you want to be um you know if you ever want a chance of coming back i don't think this is the way to go man at all at all now, you're probably thinking, well, you're a little cow. Look at you, you fat, greasy, fat guy. You dumb, stupid bastard. I'm never going to get never going to get tired of that. Yeah, I, I like that. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I, I wish Boogie would, like, go back to his roots and be a more sincere person instead of latching on to this garbage person mentality that a lot of these YouTubers are becoming. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of desperation. You go from 4 million subs to, you know, you still have 4 million subs, but only like 15,000, 20,000 people watch your videos to basically, you know, try to get money from these people by having them feel sorry for your ass because you don't want to get a job. You think you're entitled to everything because you had 4 million subscribers. Dude, you're not entitled to shit. Like, you're not. You're not. Uh, that 4 million subscribers doesn't mean shit anymore. It doesn't. 
you can't even bring it in the numbers. We see this a lot in other communities. Let's take a look at our favorite uh, local Chile. He's got 300 and almost 80,000 people following him. Can barely muster up five or 600 people at most, maybe way, way less. Uh, watching those live streams, uh, you can see that he's buying subs. You can see he's buying uh, any type of likes, dislikes, whatever. You can tell he's buying all this shit. Um, you just are not pulling the numbers anymore. And numbers at this point doesn't mean anything. Uh, you might as well just start your channel from new. That's what I would do. That's honestly what I would do if I was you. Uh, but I kind of feel like you already dug yourself into a really deep hole. It's going to hurt you and haunt you for the rest of your life. You can't get on the internet and say stupid shit. And I am one of those people that has got on the internet and says stupid shit. But whenever you guys hear it, you guys point it out. And I do say I'm sorry and I try not to say it again. There's some things I still say like the R word. I can't help it. I'm trying. Brian, I can't say the R word. Uh, not not that one. Not that one. No. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys let me know whenever I do say stupid shit, like, all the time. Like, hey, that was uncalled for. Don't say that. I'm like, oh, okay, I shouldn't have said that. Um, we learn from our lessons, but Boogie's definitely not learning from anything. He's actually just doubling down. Like, uh, I don't know how well the Lol Cow podcast is going. Um, I'm sure it's bringing in a little bit of money, uh, or Keemstar probably wouldn't want anything to do with it. And I'm not saying anything bad about Keemstar because Keemstar is doing what Keemstar has always done. Uh, and he is kind of taking advantage of this local status, but, uh, these guys that's on the local podcast, they, they basically volunteered to do it. Um, they put themselves out there for people to come on and make fun of them, call them out from being disgusting people that's what you want it's what you want you so basically you're embracing the low cow status i hope it works out for you man i really do i hope it does uh part of me i hope you just kind of quit you just stop stop what you're doing get a job do something I don't think you're going to be on the internet for the next, maybe, I'm going to say the next five years. I don't see Boogie coming back to the, like, he will not be on the internet for, for in five years. I, and I hate to say that. Now, there's a few things that could happen, and I hope this doesn't happen. Uh, I know he has a bad mental state. One, I don't want him to unalive himself. Two, I don't want him to get unalived by his body the way he treats it and again guys i'm really terrible with my body i am discovered that you know neuropathy bad blood pressure coronary heart disease severe bipolar depression I, you know i i'm no not somebody who can actually say these things without being a hypocrite but it's true at least i'm trying to fix it and i do fail from time to time but at least i keep on trying uh, and so far i've doing pretty good outside of covid um but yeah, man, like, dude, like, for real, look into the idea of getting a job. Just something, man. Just get something. Get out of the limelight. Quit taking in all the negativity. Maybe people will come back to you. Maybe five years from now, be like, hey, we really miss Boogie. We miss old Boogie. Then there's your chance to shine. Now, you've said this before on Ace3 Ace3 about another thing that we're not going to talk about. Remember that? That's one of those things that kind of set the fire a little bit. Some of the shit you said on H3H3 um, about the uh, LGBTQ community. You remember? Give it a few years. Then come back. If it doesn't work out, better your life. Just do something. Just do something. That's what we all should do. That's what we should all do. Um, but other than that, guys, I'll see you later.